has a very first class in geography. So I am Mr. Chilean, uh, by the way, I am Mr. Chilean. So I'll be handling geography for you. The next three days, my friends, the next three days, we'll be seeing some of the very important the basic facts about geography, right? The geography is one important subject in your civil service preparation, am I right? And one more thing I should, uh, uh, Gangraj, uh, it's not audible again. Minakshi. It's audible, it's audible. Uh, right. Admin, kindly check the connection of Minakshi individually. You can uh, message her. Okay, right, my friends. Okay. So, first of all, uh, right, I appreciate, uh, see, for example, your aspiration of becoming a civil servant. And one more thing, I understand, see, this uh, examination is one of the toughest examination in this world, right? No denial, nobody is going to deny it. But if you ask me who can clear this examination, I would say anybody, anybody with perseverance and a smart work, to be very precise, a person who can able to do hard work and channelized in the right direction, we call them as what? Smart work, right? So I understand that it means that these are the essence of becoming a very successful Right. Say, for example, becoming successful in this examination. Right, my dear friends. Right. Not taking much of the time in, say, for example, talking about the examination and the preparation mode. Directly, I'll start with this subject called as geography. Okay. Right. Now, what I'll do today, I'll just give you a general idea about the subject. What is this subject, geography? And one more thing. See, this subject is not new to you. Am I right? Uh, already, you have... Uh, Say, for example, uh, already you have studied geography till class 10. Some of you would have studied the geography in college. Okay, forget about the college. When I talk about the commonality, everybody would have studied geography till, till class 10. Am I right? Only thing is that we are going back. We should go back to the schools and we have to refresh what exactly we have studied then in the schools. Right, no exaggeration. Or I put it way, it is no simplification. When I talk about civil service preparation, civil service preparation is all about going back to the schools and studying the fundamentals clearly and come back to some of the graduation level and value it. 60 to 70 percentage of the syllabus demand, you can cover it by just studying the school books, my friend. That's the reason always we say. Good schooling is the foundation for civil service examination. If you have not studied schooling, am I right in the sense that only the social science subjects I'm talking about. Still, you can go back to your school and study. Am I right? No. Right, my dear friends. Right? So, so today, as I said, I'll just start with this subject called as geography. First, I'll give you a basic idea, my friend. What is this subject? Hmm? I'll give you a basic idea. Okay. So it can be interactive also, right? Uh, if you wish, like, uh, say, for example, okay, having an interaction, you can have an interaction. Okay, I'll have my this chat box open. I'll start with geography. When I say geography, right? Sometimes you also call them as what geography, my friend. Now, say for example, uh, somewhere if you want to define this subject, right? If you want to define this subject. Right. See, no subject can be defined. I can agree. Right. But if at all for the purpose of definition, say, for example, if you want to define a subject, uh, how you can define a subject, the word itself gives you an approximate meaning what exactly the subject is all about, my friend. So in that regard, if you ask me, okay, what is this geography? I would say you can split into two words. Am I right? Geo and graphy, my friend. Right. You can call it as geo and graphy. Okay. If somebody is asking you, what is this uh, geo, right? What do you mean by geo? Geo means what? Earth, my friend. Okay. What is a graphy? Graphy, you can call it as what? Study. Or even you can call them as what? Description. All right. So it is all about the study of earth. As simple as this. Okay. You're going to study about earth. Right. Very good. But let me tell you, to be very practical, no subject is so easy to be defined. Right. See, if at all if a subject is very easy to be defined, you cannot have it this as a subject. Okay. But whatever be the case, 
But if you ask me, okay, how many divisions are there? If at all, if I am just say, for example, studying geography, uh, irrespective of the factor, right, which examination I am just preparing for, if you ask me how many divisions are there, my dear friends, geography has two major divisions or area. What are they, if you ask me? I would say it is physical geography of the world. It is physical geography, right? Not word, forget about this word, right? Physical geography. And number two, you call them as what? Human geography, my friend. Right? You call them as what? Human geography. These are the two major divisions of geography, my friend. That is one, you call them as what? Physical geography. And two, you call them as what? Human geography. Now comes the greatest question, right? Okay, fine. What is that I am going to study in this human geography and physical geography? Physical geography, my dear friends, you'll be studying about Earth. Right? You'll be studying about Earth. When it comes to human geography, you'll be studying about world. So you'll be wondering, right? What is this? Don't you think that both these words are same? No. My dear friends, both these words are very closely resembling each other. Nobody is denying that fact. But they have their own difference in meaning. Right. I'll tell you, my friend, what exactly is the meaning? Say, for example, I'll put it this way. Instead of, say, for example, talking about this earth and world difference. Okay. I will put it in this way. Okay. Every day, right, you use these words, correct? Sometimes... I use a word called as house. Okay. Sometimes I refer to the same entity as a home, my friend. Right. Now comes the question. Do you have any difference between these two words, my friend? House and home. Obviously, yes. They have their own difference in meaning. If that is the case, you tell me. Right. What is this house and when this house you call it as a home, my friend? I have a reason for asking this question. I'll connect it later. I'll connect it later, my friend. On what occasion, right? This entity you call it as a house, and what occasion you this entity you call them as what? World. Very good. House is just a structure, mandara. Very good. Fantastic. Right. House is just a structure, and home is where the emotions are. <laughs> emotions are. Okay, fine. Right. Uh, when we start living in the means, when we start living, you call it as a home. Very good. Right, uh, Chetan, fantastic, right? Uh, house may be rented or owned, not exactly. Home is where we have homely feeling. <laughs> if someone lives in house, you call it as home. Okay. Right, very good. When human lives in the home, very good, fantastic. Anusha, that's beautiful. My dear friend, what is this house and what is this home? Let me tell you, my friend. See, for example, When I talk about house, right, you very well said, house is just a structure. House is just a physical entity, my friend. It is just a physical entity. Am I right? When I say physical entity, I have its presence. That's it. Right? It is just a physical entity. Right? I have a structure which is made up of brick and mortars. Am I right? Brick and mortar. It is just a physical entity. It is just a physical structure. Am I right? But my dear friends, as you said, when, when exactly this house becomes home, my dear friends, this house should have this socio-economic structure called as family. Am I right? Only if this house as a family, it becomes what? Home. Am I right? This is a basic difference. Nobody says, right? It means, say, for example, when I talk about home warming, nobody says it is home warming. You call them as what? House warming. Correct? My dear friends, the same difference you can apply it between this earth and world. How? My dear friends, as I said, if you just study about this earth alone, without any human element involved in it, you call them as what? Physical geographic study. When the human element involved in it, my friend, am I right? Family is nothing but what? The presence of human. Am I right? Family itself is what? The socio-economic structure, my friend. It is a socio-economic structure. 
right? So the physical structure along with the socio-economic structure, you call them as what form, right? So my dear friends, the same relation you just applied here, right? Study of earth in isolation of human being, you call them as what? Physical geography. Study of earth along with human being, you call them as what? Human geography, as simple as this. Now comes the question, okay, that is okay. But what is that I'm going to study in human geography? My dear friends, you'll be studying about people. You'll be studying about resource. Study of people, you call them as what? Social geography. You call them as what? Social geography. You're going to study about people, right? The population, the growth, distribution, right? The cultural distribution, linguistic reorganization or linguistic organization, right? Right. This is what spatial means. So when I talk about the, the spatial distribution of people, right? Simply you're going to study about people. On the other hand, what else you'll be talking about? I'll be talking about the resource. Study of resource, I call them as what? Economic geography. You call them as what? Economic geography. Right? We are going to study about resources. Otherwise, it is also called as resource geography. Correct? That's the reason, my friend, this human geography is sometimes also called as socio-economic geography. It is also called as socio-economic geography. Right, my friend? Sir, then why do we call housewife but not homewife? Uh, that's a good question, Praveen Kumar. Right. <laughs> Chale, okay. Some sociologist should be answering this question. Okay. Right. Okay. Right, my dear friends. So, what are the different divisions in geography? We have an idea. What are the divisions? Either I can have two divisions or I can have three divisions. If I say two divisions, what are they? Physical and human geography. When I say three divisions, right? I say it is physical, social, and economic geography. That's it. Am I right? Right, my dear friends. Now, okay. What are the different branches? You have an idea. Now comes the question. What are the different approaches? Right? How can I approach this subject? If you ask me, what is the different approaches? Right? Approach or approaches. There are two approaches, my friend. Number one, I call them as what? Universal approach. I call them as what? Universal approach. Versus a regional approach, my friend. What is this universal and what is this regional? I'll tell you. See, geography itself is a spatial study. We call them as what? Spatial study. Very good. Right, right. What Praveen Kumar asked, right, Arun has uh, right, replied to you, right, he's saying that nowadays you don't call them as housewife, you, you call them as what? Homemaker. Very good. Fantastic. Right. Good. Okay. Whatever it is. Coming back to here. Geography is a spatial study, my friend. Right? Sir, could you please repeat again about geography? Simply I said, geography means, right, geography is just a study of earth or description of earth. I mean, we are going to study about Earth as simple as this. Geography can basically be divided into physical and human geography. What is physical geography? Studying about Earth in isolation of human being. I don't study about human being. I will be studying about what? Land, landform features. I will be studying about air, atmosphere. I will be studying about water, hydrosphere. That is physical geography. Correct? As I said, my dear friend, geography is a spatial study. What is a spatial study, my friend? I'll be studying about different space or you call them as what? Different place. Am I right? I'm going to talk about different place. Correct? See, history and geography, there is a basic difference. My friend. History, we call them as a temporal study. And geography, we call them as what? Spatial study. What is the difference? Temporal means time. Am I right? Time sequence, chronology. Correct? The basic difference I'll tell you, history, you'll be studying about the same place, but different time. Geography, you'll be studying about different place, but same time. How? History, take India. India, same place, but different time. Ancient India, medieval India, modern India, etc. Geography, same time, but different place. I'll be studying about India, I'll be studying about, say, for example, Asia, 
North America, South America, and so on. Right, the simple way of right defining the scope matrix. Okay, now here, this is what I call them as what approach. Geography is more like an area study. Correct. Which area I'm choosing and I'm studying accordingly, I name it matrix. In that case, if I'm just studying the entire world, right? I'm, I'm just taking the entire world for my study, right? That's what I call them as what universal approach. And that geographic study, I call them as what world geography. I call them as what world geography. Okay. Right. On the other hand, if I just talk about region, there can be plenty of examples of a region. Anything which is smaller than world is a region. It can be a continent, it can be a country, it can be a state, right? It can be a district, whatever it is. All right. So anything which is smaller than the world, I call it as a region. Right? If you ask me, okay, give me one example of a region. India is a finest example, right? That's the reason I would say as an example, my friend. Right? If I'm just selecting India as my area of my study, then that geography, I call them as what? Indian geography. I call them as what? Indian geography. So when I say Indian geography, Indian geography is just an example. Am I right? It is just an example. Though there are plenty, I'm just giving you only one. Uh, please share the slide of PPT of today's session. Of Obviously, whatever the images, whatever the slides, whatever the annotations, right? whatever the study material you'll be referring in the class, everything will be shared. Right, it will be sent to you on the same day. Okay, don't worry about it. Okay, a separate folder will be maintained from my side. You will be getting the same. Okay, right, my friend. So, what are the different approaches I have just given? Right, entire world, if I am studying, I call them as what? World geography. If I am studying only the geography of India, I call them as what? Indian geography. So, my dear friends, let us now go for the permutation and combination. When I talk about the divisions, when I talk about the divisions, the major divisions, I understand the major divisions were two. What are they? It is physical geography, right, versus human geography, right? Physical geography versus human geography. When I talk about approach, right, at least we have taken two approaches, man. Okay, what are they? Number one, I call them as what? World geography. I call them as what? World geography. And number two, I call them as what? Indian geography. Right, I call them as what? Indian geography. Right. So these are the different approaches what we have selected. Now comes the question, what are the different combinations I have? Now you calculate the combinations, my friend. How many different combinations are there? One, it can be Physical geography of the world. Number two, it can be physical geography of India. Number three, it can be physical geography of, sorry, excuse me, human geography of world. And number four, it can be human geography of India, my friend. See how many combinations are there. Physical geography of the world, right? Human geography of the world. Physical geography of India. Human geography of India. Am I right? See how many different combinations are there. Okay. Right. Or I'll slightly change the combinations, right? Physical geography of world, physical geography of India, human geography of the world, and human geography of India, my friend. Okay. So let me write down these combinations, my friend, just for your understand. So how many different combinations are there? Number one. What I have marked it as one is nothing but what? Physical geography of the world. Or simply you call them as what? World physical geography. You call them as what? World physical geography. Right. What is this combination number two? Combination number two, you call them as what? India physical geography. Correct? You call them as what? India physical geography. Combination number three, we call them as what? World human geography. Combination number four, 
correct and combination number four i call them as what india human geography correct you call them as what india human geography my dear friends irrespective of the examination you are preparing for irrespective not necessarily that you are preparing for civil service examination right irrespective of the examination you are preparing for if you are preparing for geography my dear friends what are the different areas you will study if you ask me right these are the broad areas you will be studying my friend right what are the broad areas of my study will be right you will be studying about physical geography of the world physical geography of india human geography of the world and human geography of india even if you take the ncert ncert will be having the same divisions okay but let me tell you my friend for examination purpose which is very important if you ask me this physical geography and physical geography of the world and human geography of the world will be very important to be very precise the physical geographic study is very very important for you in the civil service preparation it is very very important okay right now what i have just given right what exactly i have just given you a picture is the overall idea about geography what is geography what are the different branches i have in geography what will i be studying in this branch right and what are the different approaches i can have and taking the combination how many different areas will i be studying right we have decoded it entire preparation any book you take it right right even when i talk about the heading of the book the heading of the book will be relevant to this particular four topics my friend or the four four broad areas okay right i have just given you the overall picture of job now what i'll do my friend we'll just take with the basic facts i thought of uh, uh, going for this exercise called as a decoding of the syllabus that is very important because uh, see uh, any examination irrespective of the examination you go for right understanding the syllabus is very very important because without understanding the syllabus right normally people study very hard my friend i have seen people mean students right studying for 10 hours 10 hours they sit they study right i don't question their hard work but when it comes to success they were not able to succeed if you understand where exactly they are making the mistake it is very simple they don't have the understanding of the syllabus only if you understand the syllabus you will know what is important and what is not important what is that i should read and what is that i should not read right if you want to make a distinction there you should know the syllabus am i right so every class i start with the decoding of the syllabus but for you i am not starting with the decoding of the syllabus uh, once the say for example the regular classes starts there the first class i will be starting with the decoding of the syllabus am i right of course right i believe the decoding of the syllabus is ultimately important very very important my friend okay so i'll be doing this decoding of the syllabus what is this decoding trying to understand what are the sub topics of the syllabus very important without knowing what is the syllabus this preparation becomes very daisy my friend it will be very gloomy right if you want a smart work to be done syllabus understanding is must okay okay how or whatever it is right we'll be doing the same when the regular classes starts okay right my friend so what i'll do i'll just start with the very basic facts about geography my friend very basic friends what is the shape of the earth right what do you mean by uh, earth movement what do you mean by rotation what do you mean by revolution etc am i right see all these things appears very simple you would have studied in schools i agree but here we are going to add some values to it we are going to add values to it my friend okay right right so let's start geography my friend start so geography as you know it's a study of earth right so we'll add some of the very important information regarding this earth okay now somewhere even if you want to take notes you can take it and one more thing uh, for taking notes if you ask me what will be the best uh, way of say for example taking notes 
right uh, for effective notes i'll tell you what i normally prescribe my friend the format what i prescribe you always use a a4 sheet size paper my friend okay right let it be a a4 size paper okay why a a4 size paper i'll tell you because this is the same size of paper that is right say for example prescribed in for your mains examination upsc mains examination so you also try writing the class notes in this format and my dear friends till the offline classes opens right online is the only way where we can interact and we cannot delay the process am i right more you delay the process right you preparing for the examination becomes very difficult but online class we have the greatest constraint am i right only thing is that i am just looking at a camera and i am just speaking assuming that right almost say for example the larger crowd is sitting on the other side right somewhere i am just imagining right now you should also create such an environment am i right say for example whenever the online classes are going kindly avoid lying down in the bed and looking at your mobile am i right this is what happens right and i said that most of you would have been lying in your bed am i right people will be doing some work people will be cooking right people will be driving bikes right vehicles and they will be listening to the class that will not work my friend am i right try to sit in a class like structure whenever you see the class whenever you are there in a class right i'll tell you why because it is all improving your own efficiency and your receptive skills okay just right 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 see and one more thing use laptops uh, avoid mobiles why i tell you because the mobile the screen will be very very small right and you following things becomes little difficult okay and sit with a notes my friend right wherever you will be able to take some notes okay and uh, i prefer that you sit with a4 sheets like loose sheets or you take uh, any book am i right long sized right long unruled book my friend and my suggestion always try to divide this page into two unequal halves right one side you can divide into two third of the page another side it is one third of a page my friend am i right two third and one third if you ask me why say for example whatever when i talk about the class notes my friend this is the place where you have to take class notes am i right class notes okay i'll tell you why i am just asking you to take class notes in this two third i'll tell you because this one third you can use it for value addition my friend right not today but at the later stage say for example you are studying some newspaper you are having a relevant information you can add it there you can add current affairs information you can add revision facts you can add facts that is from ncert so somewhere you should have the scope of addition so class notes you take it on two third side right one third you reserve it keep it blank right and use it for say for example value addition and my dear friends the second reason why i am saying that okay this dimension should be very fine because when you see the mains examination paper my friend right the specimen copy of mains examination right right mains exam paper right the answer script my friend the answer script this is how it looks like am i right you will be having very large margin on both side my friend right very large margin then you will be having something called as right upsc almost say for example written at the top of this page my friend right this is how this exactly this is how the specimen copy of the mains examination paper looks like right upsc will be written at the top right both side you will be having the margin right and you can write right your notes only in this space and i am telling you this two third space and this space will be exactly matching there you will not have any problem of scaling down or scaling up a diagram because you will be habituated to use this space effectively am i right because there you will be finding a difficulty you will be finding that all of a sudden the say for example the paper has become so small am i right so you have this practice see 
what i am telling you may appear very small at this moment but i am telling you my friend these are the game changers these are the nuances of the examination right say for example there you are almost habituated to draw a very big diagram and this diagram is not fitting in this margin then you're gone correct very starting itself you start having this practice my friend right right so that mains answer writing when you clear this preliminary examination when you go to mains examination when you write it you will not feel difficulty am i right somewhere right you will be say for example i'll put this way right you will be acquainted to it correct right my friends right this is what i thought of suggesting right i have suggested Uh, meanwhile some of your questions um, sir will you be sharing the copy of your notes obviously yes i'll be sharing sir can you repeat it again 106 sir you have asked this question last minute okay when i do not know what exactly i was talking about i was simply talking about right the mains examination pattern and how exactly your class notes should look like class notes are very important my friend because the last uh, two years the number of questions in my examination mains preliminary examination what came from our class notes was more than the fact what came from ncr am i right people were not able to answer the question right studying the ncr thing but people mean students were able to answer the question with our class notes so class notes is going to be very important so have a very neat class notes my friend okay So how exactly the class notes can be prepared, written? I have just given you the structure. Okay, right, my friends. Now, right. Uh, let me talk about uh, right. So the very basic facts, my friend. Right. So let me start with the right. The shape of the earth. Okay. If somebody is asking you what exactly is the shape of the earth, the shape of the earth is what geoid, my friend. We call them as what geoid. Just a minute. I simply said, if somebody is asking you what exactly is the shape of the Earth, right? Shape of the Earth is nothing but what geoid, right? In one word, if you are explaining or saying that what exactly is the shape of the Earth, it is geoid. Now comes the question: What is the meaning of geoid? My dear friends, geoid literally means Earth's shape. Geoid literally means Earth's shape, my friend. Now it is very sarcastic, right? If somebody is asking you what is the shape of the Earth, you will be telling them that this is Earth's shape itself, correct? But why, if you are means, I am using this such a word. If you ask me, my friend, I'll tell you. It's very unique, right? It's very unique. Geoid means Earth-like, as you said, right? Or Earth's shape. It's very unique. Totally, we have eight planets in our solar system. in this eight planets every planet has their different shape no two planet has a same shape they can be very similar okay likewise say for example uh, one planet you call them as what earth's twin my friend we call them as what earth's twin even that planet what i call it as a earth's twin they resemble very close to that of earth but not same am i right they are very similar right when i talk about the size of this planet it is very very similar correct when i talk about the say for example the composition also it is very similar but not same any idea that which planet in our solar system is called as earth's twin which resembles more like earth very good that is venus my friend fantastic fantastic good good it is venus okay right 
Now coming to the shape of the earth again, as I said, right? It is geoid. Geoid means, right, earth's shape, my friend. Okay. Now somebody is asking you, okay, everything is fine. You describe it. My dear friends, if you are describing it, then how do you describe it? You can say, earth is more like a sphere. Earth is more like a sphere, right? More like a sphere, but with a bulge at equator. With bulge at equator. With bulge at equator and poles being relatively flat. And the poles being relatively flat. I'll repeat again if you want. Right? I said earth is more like a sphere with bulge at equator and the poles being relatively flat. Correct? This is what the definition says or description says. Okay, everything is fine. So one thing I understand, my friend. What is that? From this statement, I understand the radius of Earth. Am I right? This radius of Earth is not uniform. Everywhere the radius of the Earth is different. Right? I have just given you two statements, right? With bulge at equator and poles being very flat. It means... Where exactly you have the maximum radius of the earth, if you ask me, right, maximum radius of the earth is recorded at equator. Where the minimum radius is recorded, minimum radius is recorded at poles, right? It is recorded at poles, my friend. Very important. This fact and all, fact is not important. When it comes to UPSC, concepts are important. See, your State Public Service Commission the things may be different. But when it comes to UPSC, the concepts are more important than what? The facts. But still, right, if you're asking, okay, what is a fact? My dear friends, when I talk about equatorial diameter, this equatorial diameter is somewhere around 12,756 kilometer. 12,756 kilometer. When I talk about polar diameter, it is 12,714 kilometers. It means between them you have a difference of what? 42 kilometers. Polar diameter is 42 kilometers less than that of equatorial diameter. Right. And I'm just talking in terms of radius. There is a difference of 21 kilometers. Equatorial region, the radius is 21 kilometer more than that of Pools. That's the idea. Okay. Right. So one, I said the radius is not uniform. But however, you ask me, okay, if you're asking, then what is the average radius of Earth? If you ask me, what is average radius of Earth? And it is somewhere around 6,378 kilometers, my friend. Is it necessary to remember the numerical values? Right. Rohini. No. Approximation is the key. Approximately, you try to remember. See, even if you can remember, right, the radius of Earth is slightly more than 6,000 kilometers, I am happy. As simple as this, I am happy about that. If you feel that, okay, it is more than 6,000 kilometers, if you say, that is okay. Right, exactly remembering these facts are not important. But here, if you ask me what is important, what is important? Remembering that equatorial region has maximum radius, that is important. Remembering polar regions are having the least radius, that is important. Okay, right, right. So what is the shape of the earth? Some of the values, right, just to justify it, we have given it. Now comes the biggest question, my friend, why? Always you have a, have a habit of asking why, right? Even if somebody says, right, okay, this is my name, so and so, you ask them why? Okay, right. We have we are habituated asking this word for this why. Okay, let us ask it. Right, why? Why the radius of Earth is not uniform? Right? Why exactly there is a bulge at equator? Why there is a bulge at equator? My friend, Earth is fast rotating. Am I right? Any fast rotating object 
cannot be a perfect sphere. Simple. You take a spherical balloon, my friend. Right? Right. You take a spherical balloon, a very strong balloon. Right. Fill this balloon with water. Am I right? Fill this balloon with water, you throw it in the air. When you are throwing it in the air, almost it will be more spherical. Am I right? But if you throw this balloon in the air with a little spin in it, right? If you start spinning it, it will not be sphere, right? This balloon will start bulging towards the outside. Am I right? Say, for example, that's what very popularly you call them as what? Right. Centrifugal force, my friend. Centrifugal force, right? Any rotating object, there will be a force which is acting outside the center, away from the center. See, for example, if you ask me what is the principle based on which your clothes in washing machine is dried, am I right? You'll be finding the drum rotates very fast, am I right? It rotates very, very fast, right? Then the water will be thrown, right? Detached from the clothes and it will be thrown. Why? Centrifugal force. My dear friends, any fast rotating object there will be a force acting outside the center. That is what you call them as what? Centrifugal force. Now, if you ask me why there is a bulge at equator, you have simple answer. That is nothing but what? Centrifugal force. Right? As simple as this. Right? Why there is a bulge? I have answered it. Am I right? We ask me then why poles are flat? Simple. It's a compensation. Am I right? If somewhere something is bulging, it is always at the cost of some deficit. Am I right? So this bulge is concurrent with the poles becoming flat, my friend. Okay. The same rotation of the earth is making the poles to be flat because the rocks are being indirectly pulled from where? The polar regions. Okay. So let me sum up. What is the shape of the earth? Geoid. What is the literal meaning of geoid? Earth's shape. What is the description? Earth is more like a sphere with bulge at equator and poles are flat. Why there is a bulge at equator? Very important. Centrifugal force, not centripetal, my friend. I said it is centrifugal force. Could you please repeat the last point as my connection was reconnected? That's what I mean. I'm just summarizing it. Okay. It's all because of what? Centrifugal force. Right? That's all about right, the shape of the earth. And let me tell you, my friend, no fast rotating object can be a perfect sphere. Am I right? And one more thing, see, if the velocity of rotation is more, right, the bulge will be more. Because centrifugal force will be more. Am I right? Simple. Okay. Right. Now, my dear friends, all these basic facts, we have done it, right? And one more thing, when I talk about, uh, okay. so when I talk about uh, the velocity, rotation, right? You may ask, right, why centrifugal effectivity is very high in equatorial region, my friend? What I have just marked it as a line, this is what I call them as what? Axis of rotation, right? Right, axis of rotation, north pole to south pole, right? This is what you have the axis of rotation. Right. Now, here, if you ask me, right, if you're standing, see somebody, right? See, for representation purpose, different people are standing on the surface of the earth. Am I right? If you ask me, my friend, right? Okay, I am just asking you, right? Different people are standing at different locations. You tell me, right, a person standing at which location will travel a longer distance perimeter in one day my friend. time is same same time right who will travel a longer distance a man standing where my friend the diagram is front of you right you tell me a man standing where will travel a longer distance very good equate you know speed is equal to distance by time here time is constant am i right one rotation it is going to be 24 hours Am I right? But who is going to travel a longer distance? A person who is going to stand at what equator, my friend? Am I right? So, what is the idea? If I am just talking about the velocity 
of rotation at the surface you tell me okay which place will have maximum velocity at the surface which place on the earth will have maximum velocity of movement rotation whatever you say on the surface undoubtedly it is equator am i right the velocity right right velocity at which the surface moves at equator is somewhere around 1650 km per hour as you move towards the poles it reduces why because i understand the radius with respect to the axis of rotation reduces okay see this much technicality is not needed but i'm telling you why centrifugal force is more at equator because right the rotational velocity is more at equator that's the answer correct okay right my friends so all about shape we have done now just moving further my friend right you call them as what earth movement right you call them as what earth movement hey, what is this earth movement sir if you ask me what is this earth movement the combined movement of earth that is rotation and revolution rotation and revolution you call it as what earth movement you know right rotation what is rotation earth spinning on its own axis you call them as what rotation what is revolution earth moving around the sun you call them as what revolution am i right if earth rotates uh, in axis called as rotation earth rotates in its orbit called as revolution not season revolution okay. can you please repeat the explain the last point which point anusha okay, just tell me which point i'll try to explain it okay how many friends as i said when i talk about earth's movement i have two movement what are they rotation and revolution right i'll just explain it further but if you ask me okay what is rotation Right, I would say the spin of the Earth, my friend. This is Earth. Am I right? The spin of the Earth, I call them as what? Rotation. Right. Spin of the Earth. Then what is revolution? Movement of Earth around Sun. You call them as what? Revolution. Very good. Now you tell me, my friend. Because Earth is rotating, Earth is rotating, right? Because Earth is rotating, what is the immediate outcome? Just tell me, because Earth is rotating, what is the immediate outcome, my friend? Very good. Day and night difference. Fantastic, my friend. Why exactly the sun is rising? Why exactly the sun is setting? Why do I have night? Why do I have brighter part of the day? Right? Every day it is all because of what rotation. The immediate outcome of rotation is what? Day and night differences. And you tell me, because earth is revolving what is the outcome my friend fantastic seasons right you call them as what seasons variations climate and season is slightly different i'll tell you later right season will change same place season will change right not climate climate is a consolidated value of a season you call them as what climate very good because earth is rotating i have day and night differences because earth is revolving i have what seasons very good fantastic right now my dear friends what is this one complete rotation if earth completes one complete rotation what exactly it is very popularly called as my friend i'll repeat the question what is one complete rotation of earth very popularly called as very good it is simply called as one day one day means one complete Rotation of Earth, right? Even Praveen has said Earth Day. I accept it, right? Right. Bakesh, Tanlakshmi, accept it. Okay. It is called as one day, my friend. Then what exactly one revolution is called as? Very good. One year. Very good. One complete revolution. I call them as what? One year. One complete rotation. I call them as what? One day. Fantastic, right? So you know what is rotation. You know what is revolution what is the immediate outcome of rotation you know what is the immediate outcome of revolution you know what is one complete rotation is called as one day what is one complete revolution you call them as what one year everything is good 
fine my friend all these things what we have seen is a basic facts my friend now i'll take it separately right i'll give you the basic facts but what is very important here is value addition value addition am i right i'll tell you what exactly is the value addition here the next slide i'll put it for value addition right as i said right if you want to take it you can take as a definition what is rotation right spin of earth what is rotation if you ask me i would say spin of earth on its own axis spin of earth on its own axis is called as rotation very important simple spin spinning of earth very uh, uh, means i'll say for example they say the angular movement of earth on its own axis is called as rotation but that much complexity let me not add it and one more thing let me tell you this examination take it from the very first day try to simplify the concept right simplification is the key and approximation is a beauty right right my friend spin of earth on its own axis you call them as what rotation okay now my friends uh, as i already said right uh, one complete rotation is called as one day if that's what it says right earth takes one day to make one complete rotation right or you can take it in this different way right right say for example as i said right one complete rotation is called as one day my friend right and as you already said rotation causes day and night difference rotation causes day and night difference now comes one of the very important question my friend what is the direction of rotation what is the direction of rotation if you ask me what is the direction of rotation it is west to east right let us never use this word called as clockwise or anti clockwise uh, normally even uh, people ask question right what is the direction of rotation is it clockwise or anti clockwise that statement itself is a fallacy my friend because it depends from which angle you are seeing this earth say for example if you are seeing this earth from north pole the rotation will be counter clockwise or anti clockwise if you are seeing the earth from south pole am i right the rotation will be clockwise right it is something like that it means two people standing in opposite direction seeing a wheel which is rotating what is clockwise to me will be counter clockwise to the other person am i right as simple as this right so my dear friends i mean say for example saying whether it is clockwise or anti clockwise it's not so correct west to east is perfect right my dear friends just because earth is rotating from west to east it appears as everything moves from east to west now comes the biggest question right is that sun actually rising no sun is static my friend it is just earth which is rotating because of earth's rotation it appears as though sun is moving right sun is static with respect to solar system i am talking about the entire solar system itself is revolving around some other substance that's a different story am i right but sun as such is not rising neither rising nor setting it is appearing as though it is rising why because earth is moving from what west to east so everything appears they are moving towards what east to west which direction the sun rises east which direction the moon rises east right but only thing is that moon we fail to notice because every day moon comes one hour late there are days when moon rise and sun rise will happen simultaneously but we fail to notice whatever it is the case right which direction moon rises east which direction sun rises east which direction stars rises east my dear friends including the so called pole star right they slightly rise in the east and they move towards the west am i right why because earth is moving from what west to east that's the basic idea my friend. okay right so what is the direction of rotation right we have taken see for example how it happens say for example assume that you are traveling uh, by a train by a bus right you are sitting in a window window seat okay the bus is moving forward or train is moving forward and you will be finding that every object appears as though it is moving 
backward am i right mountains will be moving back right trees will be moving back perception am i right the same concept you apply it here okay now whatever we have seen is the basic facts my friend right very basic facts we have seen okay we have seen the basic facts now my dear friends uh we will add say for example slightly some complex cities to it because earth is rotating as well as revolving okay now i am asking you one question you have to simply answer me okay the question appears as though it is very simple right but answer to this is not so simple so okay. what is the question right right how much time does earth take i'll write it i'm just talking about rotation the question is very simple right time taken by earth time taken by earth to complete complete 360 degree of rotation right on its own axis right questions appear as though it is simple but you have to tell me my friend time taken by earth to complete 360 degree of rotation on its own axis what is that time how much time my friend 24 hours it is actually not 24 hours very good you have given me the answer some of you have given me beautifully you have given me very good right right what is the time if you ask me it is 23 hours 56 minutes and 4.09 seconds but i always believe in say for example the approximation my friend right approximation i don't want the precise value right in that is the case if you ask me which value i will prefer i will prefer this 23 hours and 56 minutes okay this is the time taken by earth to complete right one rotation my friend one rotation it is 23 hours and 56 minutes then i have the greatest question right then why is that my watch is showing 24 hours why every day i call it as 24 hours what is the purpose my friend let me tell you the so called 24 hours is actually not 361 sorry 360 degree my friend right it is 361 degree of rotation right let me put it this way right when i talk about say for example approximately right approximately 361 degree of rotation on its own axis that is the time taken right what i call them as what 24 hours my friend right so just want to put a point when i talk about 360 degree of rotation that is not 24 hours but when i talk about 24 hours it is 361 degree of rotation right approximately am i right because all are taking approximate okay whatever it is right but if it's not comes the question why is 24 hours see 24 hours and 24 hours so 23 hours and 56 minutes and 24 hours there is a great difference 4 minute is not approximation 4 minute is very great am i right but my dear friends let me understand actually let me tell you there are actually two types of days when i talk about the day which is regarded as 24 hours very popularly we call them as what solar day my friend you call them as what solar day or you call them as what synodic day right what is very popular what we use it on a day to day basis is what the solar day or synodic day on the other hand my friend when i talk about uh, this 23 hours and 56 minutes very popularly we call them as what a side real day my friend right we call them as what side real day just to tell you that there are two types of days my friend right synodic day and side real day 
what is the day we are using on a day to day basis is this synodic day or sometimes you call them as what solar day so my dear friends right only thing is that i will tell you that there are two types of days but any further discussion right what is the day we will be referring is only the solar day right side real day is something like that you understand and forget it okay right now number one my friend first i'll try to understand what is this 24 hours what is this side real day why side real day sorry excuse me what is this solar day why solar day is not 360 degree of rotation we'll try to understand for that first and foremost i should understand what is 24 hours my friend what is 24 hours if somebody is asking you how do you define 24 hours see one thing i know time itself is a relative position of sun in the sky my friend am i right tidal effect june 21st is called as longest day of this year how and why we'll come to it don't worry it's called as uh, summer solstice june 21st we say longest year it is not the longest year for the entire earth it is the longest day for northern hemisphere okay right my friends now comes the question 24 hours how do you depict this 24 hours i'll give you some of the choice my friend you tell me which is the best choice of depicting this 24 hours number one a right it is sunrise of today to sunrise of tomorrow this is option one option b my friend it is sunset of today right to sunset of tomorrow what is the option c it is noon of today to noon of tomorrow what is the last option all of the above all of the above my friend so what you have to tell me is very simple among the four options what i have given right you have to tell me which is the best option my friend very good fantastic most of you have given me the right answer right right very good my friend noon to noon obviously my friend now comes the biggest question why not all of the above don't you think the sunrise of today to sunrise of tomorrow will be 24 hours not necessarily why because every day the sunrise and sunset time will change what will not change my friend what will not change is noon right so when i talk about noon my friend i talk about noon right noon means what when i just talk about noon by time when i say noon noon means 12 pm by convention i call them as what 12 pm it means what from 12 pm to 12 pm it is going to be 24 hours but how do we understand noon when i say noon what do you mean by noon my friend just give it a try and one more thing whenever i talk about time time is all about describing where the sun is placed in the sky time is the relative position of sun in the sky my friend that's the reason say for example your grandfather you just ask your grandfather like or two generation old any gentleman of that older generation you ask them time say for example particularly when i talk about the people who are working in the field they will not even look at their watch my friend right directly say for example they'll be looking at the sky they'll be looking at the shadow they'll be saying that what exactly is the time that's the principle how exactly the sun dial is also working am i right okay now my dear friends when i talk about noon you have to tell me what is noon what do you mean by noon where the sun is placed in the sky very good right above your head but i will not use this word called as right above your head i'll put it as what sun at zenith position noon means what sun at right sun at zenith position sun at zenith position my friend. or i can also say right head sun position head sun position okay with the star mark right not always necessarily what sun will be above your head not necessarily that always sun will be above your head but there is a chance there is a chance but if you ask me which is more see for example when i say 
If the sun is above your head, obviously speaking, that is your zenith position. But otherwise, if you ask me what is the zenith position, the maximum height what sun can claim in the sky. That is what you call them as what zenith position. Am I right? Okay. Now, my difference. One, right, we understood that 24 hours is known to known, my friend. Somewhere we understood that 24 hours is known to known. Okay. Right. Now, if 24 hours is known to known, I said zenith position, not zenith, huh? zenith position. Right? Zenith, zenith means maximum height what sun can claim in the sky. Highest point, as somebody said, right? Right, Tejeshwini has said it. Highest point what sun can claim. That's what I call them as what? Noon. Right, on this particular day. Okay. That zenith position can also be above your head. Okay. Now, time being, time being, you consider that it is above your head. Okay. Time being above your head, my friend. Okay. Right. Okay. If that is the case, my friend. Right. See here. 24 hours. It means what? Noon of today to noon of tomorrow. Okay. Noon of today to noon of tomorrow. Now, somewhere I'm just seeing, right? Say, for example, can you see a person is standing here? Sun is exactly above his head, right? You call them as what? Noon. You call them as noon. In one day, right? Earth is going to rotate. Okay, assume that it is rotating 360 degree, my friend. But I know when Earth is almost completing one day, this earth will also move in its orbital plane. Correct? You have this orbit, right? Along which the sun will be, means earth will be moving around the sun. Right? So by the time earth completes one day, my friend, earth will also get displaced. It will be moving in its orbital plane. Right? It will be moving in its orbital plane. Now, my dear friends, now you have to tell me approximately how many degrees every day Earth will be moving in its orbital plane. Can I say? When I talk about revolution or what I call them as what? Orbit around the sun. Right? Orbit around the sun. Right? 360 degree in its orbit is covered in 365 days. Am I right? It means in one day approximately how many degree this earth will move in its orbital plane approximately one degree see it should be less than one degree i understand but i said approximation it can be right 0.97 and so on am i right simply right it is 360 divided by 365 as simple as this 0.98 as somebody said i am taking it as roughly one day that's what you're seeing here my friend okay so every day by the time earth completes one rotation right this earth is also going to move in its orbital plane. By how many degree? One degree. So my dear friends, after completing this 360 degree of rotation, am I right? Now the biggest question is, is this gentleman is facing the sun? Is the sun is placed above his head? No. After 360 degree of rotation, right? He is not experiencing noon in order for this person to experience noon how many degree he has to tilt further whatever degree the earth has displaced that degree he has to tilt further my friend only then he'll be experiencing what noon right so very carefully if i talk about it see noon of today after 360 degree of rotation because earth is getting displaced, he is not experiencing noon. So, in order to experience noon, this place has to tilt one degree further. That's the reason I said noon to noon is nothing but what? 360 plus one degree of adjustment. Right? Only after, right, this place further rotates one degree. Now this place will have, or this gentleman will have, sun above his head you call them as what my dear friends that's the reason i again say noon to noon right 
is 360 degree plus 1 degree of adjustment. Why 1 degree? Because Earth is also moving. Right? So whenever I talk about time taken by Earth to complete this 360 degree of rotation, I call them as what? Side real day. Side real day plus 1 degree of adjustment, I call them as what? Synodic day. Am I right? Right, my dear friends. Okay. So what is side real day and what is synodic day? We have an idea. Just 360 degree of rotation on its own axis side real day. Whereas one complete rotation with respect to sun, you call them as what? <coughs> synodic day, my friend. Okay. What is the basic difference? We have an idea. Now, <coughs> excuse me. I have a question for you. Imagine a condition. Imagine a condition that Earth is not revolving, my friend. No revolution. Earth is not revolving. Earth is only rotating. That is the condition. So, no revolution, my friend. No revolution. Earth is only rotating. Right? Only rotating, my friend. If Earth is only rotating, now you tell me, what will be the difference between side real day and synodic day? Today, we have four minutes. Okay. Imagine a condition that earth is not revolving. Earth is only rotating. If that is the case, what will be the difference between side real day and synodic day? Vinay, very good. Takesh, very good. Nitya, very good. My dear friends, there will not be any difference. Okay. Because it will not move further. Very good. That's the understanding. Okay. Right. Very good. Because just because earth is revolving, right, you have this difference. Okay. If earth is not revolving, this difference will not be there. Fantastic. Your understanding is very good. Now, only thing is that formally we have to write what is the side real day and synodic day. Okay. So somewhere you take as many small notes, right? What is the side real day and side real day? Hmm? Okay. First, you write a heading called a side real day. Okay. Are you okay? Uh, okay. You take the side real day. First heading is side real day. Slightly, I'll change the sentence. Okay. Slightly, I'll change the sentence. It is the time taken by Earth. It is the time taken by Earth. I repeat again. It is the time taken. You are going to write it as side real day. It is the time taken by Earth to complete to complete 360 degree of rotation. 360 degree of rotation. on its own axis, on its own axis, it is a time taken by earth to complete 360 degree of rotation on its own axis. The second sentence you can write it, I will tell you the meaning later but you take it. It is one complete rotation. It is one complete rotation with respect to a distant star. It is one complete rotation with respect to a distant star. What is this distant star? I'll tell you later. My dear friends, don't mistake distant star for sun. Sun is the nearest star. Distant star is almost the point of infinity, my friend. Okay. And the last point you can take it. It approximately takes 23 hours and 56 minutes. It approximately takes 23 hours and 56 minutes. 
to complete such rotation okay so what is side real day we know only thing is a distance star i let you know right now second sub topic you can take it as synodic or solar day you can say it is one complete rotation it is one complete rotation with respect to sun it is one complete rotation with respect to sun within bracket you write it as near star right where are you have written sun right right i repeat i said it is one complete rotation with respect to sun sun is nothing but what near star okay sun is near star right my friend further you can write earth approximately rotates earth approximately rotates 361 degree on its own axis earth approximately rotates 361 degree on its own axis and precisely it takes 24 hours and precisely it takes 24 hours right friends so here what is sidereal day what is synodic day i have an idea what is the best way of understanding it number 1 one complete rotation on its own axis sidereal day one complete rotation with respect to sun synodic day or very important one complete rotation with respect to a distant star distant star means almost i am talking about infinity my friend one complete rotation with respect to a distant star you call them as sidereal day one complete rotation with a near star near star is nothing but what sun you call them as what synodic day that's it so all with respect to rotation we have taken it what is sidereal day what is synodic day we have taken it right 2016 capf examination conducted by upsc this question was asked okay right right so it's all about rotation now rotation is over now coming to the next concept now it is revolution okay revolution okay what is revolution you know right just write the heading called as revolution just write the heading called as revolution right movement of earth movement of earth around the sun movement of earth around the sun in an elliptical orbit right in an elliptical orbit see this word called as or elliptical orbit is just a value addition don't worry about it right i simply said movement of earth around sun right in an elliptical orbit is called as revolution okay so when i talk about revolution right right so when i talk about revolution my friend simply i said right movement of earth 
around the sun in an elliptical orbit, you call them as what? Revolution. Now, how exactly one complete revolution is called as that you know, right? One complete revolution is very popularly called as one year, my friend. Right? You know this fact. Okay, you know this fact. Okay. Now I have the biggest question for you. Okay. How long is one year, my friend? Right? Don't tell me very long. Okay, I understand it is very long, but you have to simply tell me how long is one year? How much time does Earth take to complete one revolution? 365 days, six hours, 365 days. Ah, very good, fantastic. Right, you got me the answer. 365.25 days, 365 and quarter days. Very good. Some of you have given me the answer also. Okay. Now I'm just giving you a choice. You have to tell me, my friend. Right? I'm just giving you a choice. Right? What is the choice? Right. You got me. Some of them got me the perfect answer, right? You have to tell me what exactly is this? It is 365 days, right? And six hours, 365.25 days, 365 and quarter days, or D, right? As expected, right? Instead of all of the above. I am using this word called as none of the above. Surprising, right? Tell me my friend, here, which is the best option here? Option A, option B, right? Right, so which is the best option here? Right. Somebody has written a CSIR. Am I right? I thought, uh, right, Center for Scientific and Industrial Research. Then only I thought it is CSIR. Okay. Okay. Whatever it is. Okay. Right, my friends. Let me tell you, my friend, the answer here is D. I'll tell you why. Because will you accept the fact if I say all A, B, C are one and the above? If I believe that 24 hour is a day, then six hours is nothing but what? 0.25 parts of a day. Six hours is nothing but what? Quarter of a day. My dear friends, A, B, C is one and the same. Am I right? Is one and the same. Right. And my dear friends, let me tell you, right, the very important fact. If you ask me how long is one year, it is actually not six hours. If you ask me one year, right, see, for example, lower class NCRT says it is six hours. I'm not denying the fact, but that is not precise. Right? Right. If you ask me how long is one year, my dear friends, it is 365 days. Right? Five hours, 48 minutes, and 46 seconds. This is what the length of one day, year is all about, my friend. All right. See, it is not the fact that we do not know about it. We know it is all about the practicality. We are considering this as, right, six hours, my friend. Now comes the question everything is fine. Everything is fine. Why are you saying, see, for example, every fourth year, I am having a leap year. Why? See, for example, you know what is a leap year, right? See, when I talk about a leap year, right, if you talk about a leap year, my friend, right, every fourth year is going to be a leap year. Am I right? Everybody knows it, right? Everybody knows it, my friend, right? Because I understand, see, for example, assuming that Earth takes, like, 365 days and six hours for completing one revolution, you cannot have six hours separately considered as a day. Am I right? You cannot have it. So what do you do? Every year, you start accumulating six hours, six hours, six hours, and six hours. So what happens? Once in four years, this four six hours gets accumulated and makes it one full day, my friend. That's the reason on this leap year, my friend, you will be having, right, instead of 365 days, you will be having 366 days right now i have a question for you my friend how to identify a leap year or not see for example if i'm just saying year 2020 the last year no denial everybody knows that it is a leap year because i understand simply you divide it by four check it whether it is divisible by four if yes yes it is a leap year what about 2016 
that is also a leap year what about 2004 that is also a leap year what about 2000 my friend the year 2000 was it a leap year year 2000 my friend obviously speaking yes it is leap year correct it is a leap year now the biggest question comes okay what about 1904 this is also divisible by 4 am i right only take the last two digits and check whether it is divisible by 4 that is also a leap year am i right but very interestingly 1900 is not a leap year right 1800 ad is not a leap year right similarly when i talk about 1700 ad is not a leap year but when i talk about 600 ad that is a leap year now comes the question, why these years are not leap year? Now comes the question, why, right? These years are not leap year, if you ask me, my friend, right? Why 1600, sorry, 1700, 1800, and 1900 is not a leap year? Because to check leap year, my friend, I have two conditions. Everybody knows it. Condition number one, see, for example, if it is only six hours, I'll be having only one condition, my friend. What is the only condition? Right, you just divide it by four, right? If it is getting divisible by four, then it is a leap year. If it is only six hours, right? Every fourth year would have been leap year. But it is not the case, right? My dear friends, you have the second condition. What is the second condition? If the given year is century, the given year is century, then it should be divisible by 400, my friend. The reason for having this is very simple because it is not six hours, right? It is somewhere around five hours, 48 minutes and 46 seconds. I'll give you a calculation, right? But that calculation is not so much important, but I'll explain you later, right? Tomorrow's class, I'll just tell you why these years are not leap year. Why 1700 is not a leap year? Why 1800 is not a leap year? Why 1900 is not a leap year? I'll tell you. For every 400 years, we will not have 100 leap years, my friend. The number of permitted leap years for the span of 400 years is only 97. Okay. Right. The same, I'll explain it to you tomorrow, my friend. So somewhere, right, I'll end the class today, right, at this moment. All right. We are almost in between this revolution. Revolution is not completed. So tomorrow, I'll just complete this revolution. And tomorrow, we'll be discussing about a very, very important topic called as what? Season cycles. Okay. Right, my friends. So sir, thank you. And God bless. Right. Uh, any doubts you have, you can ask me. We can interact. You can type it. Right. We can interact. Say about NCRP. Uh, could you share notes? Yes, I can share the notes. Thank you so much. Side real day once again. Okay. Uh, regarding the NCRT, my friend, I would suggest you only say, for example, four NCRTs, right? Uh, don't go beyond it. But if you ask me, uh, for geography, what uh, Dr. Rajkumar Academy for Civil Service gives you as a book, right? printed material that is a beautiful book right uh, this book is written by a very important scholar of geography called as a dr puller so puller has written the geography material for drax dr rajkumar academy so if you want me to uh, prescribe a material for geography i would say go with drax material okay if not if you want additional right say for example ncrts have these four ncrts my friend right Class 11, Part A NCRT, which is called as Fundamentals of Physical Geography. This NCRT will be covering World Physical Geography. Right. The second NCRT, Class 11, Part B. This NCRT is called as India Physical Environment. This will be covering Physical Geography of India. The third NCRT is called as Fundamentals of Human Geography, that is Class 12, Part A, NCRT. And finally, Class 12, Part B, NCRT, India, People and Economy. People means social. 
social and economy socio economic means human geography right so the fourth book is for india human geography my dear friends we have decoded four areas right world physical geography india physical geography class 11 two books world human geography india human geography class 12 two books that's it okay Some of the other doubts, yeah, and just answer one one by one your doubts. Okay. okay, where do you share your material? Uh, uh, as a practice, I'll be sending my material uh, to the admin, and admin will be sending it to you. They'll be having their own mechanism of sending it. They'll be sending it to you. Uh, why does Earth rotates from east to west? Explain it, sir. That's a fact, my dear friends. See, for example, rotation can have happened anywhere, right? Any time. And there are, uh, say, for example, when I talk about the uh, right, few planets, few planets will be rolling around. Am I right? Few planets will be moving from means rotating from what west to east, right? Few planets from east to west. Am I right? It has happened, and we are just studying the present image. Plenty of factors are there. Right. And tomorrow, right, it can change also. Who knows? All of a sudden, slowly. And one more thing. When I talk about the rotation of the Earth, the velocity is not uniform. When Earth had its formation, initial formation, proto-Earth period, the velocity of the Earth is somewhere around, say, for example, one day is just six hours. Now it has come down to 24 hours. In future, it will come down further. Am I right? One day it can stop. Another impact can make it rotate from what? East to west. Right. Today, it is rotating from what west to east. That's it. Okay. Uh, so your number so that I can message you if any doubts. You can message uh, to the admin and admin will be forwarding it to me. Right. Okay. Uh, how days are divided like 30, 31 and 28. See, February month is kept for celestial adjustments. Right. This kept for celest celestial adjustments. Once the celestial adjustment uh, is done, why not January? Because January is the first month. They don't want any corrections there. So second month, they have reserved it for correction, right? Calendar corrections. And March onwards, there is no correction. Okay, it is just kept for correction purpose. Addition, removal, etc. Okay. So please say about decoding of the syllabus. Definitely, I'll be telling you. But uh, in the regular classes, I'll be telling you. The very first starting of the class, I'll be starting with decoding of the syllabus. Sir, what is the angle of tilt? How it is measured? Angle of tilt is 23 and a half degree, my friend. Right, 23 and a half degree. How this 23 and a half degree is measured, if you ask me, it is with orbital plane. Say, for example, this is axis of rotation, right? Right, say, for example, this is your orbit, right? This is your axis of rotation without a tilt. Am I right? With tilt, how many difference, if you means how many degree, if you ask me, it is 23 and a half degree. So apart from the four NCRT, any other suggestions? No. I believe that uh, Dr. Rajkumar Academy material should, itself should be fine enough for you. Can we read class 6 to 10? Yes, you can read it. See, if class 11 books, if you're finding it difficult to read it, then you start your preparation from class 6 to 10, right? Uh, once the strong foundation is uh, laid, you can come to class 11 and 12 books. So we don't have admin number, sir. Even I don't have admin number. Hmm. Okay, anybody from admin side here? Is there anyone from admin side who can answer this query? Right. How students uh, will able to? Yeah. Yes. Uh, how students will able to get their notes? That's the question. Uh, question. So even I do not know. So I think. Uh, I think it will be intimated, my friends. Okay, don't worry about it. Telegram channel, they said. Thank you. Thank you. So you have a telegram channel, it seems. So all this uh, notes, right, materials, slides, what I am using, everything will be posted there. Am I right? Abhishek is asking how full moon day occurs. See, full moon day, you will be seeing the complete day part of the moon. Am I right? See, for example, whenever I talk about the mean, say, for example, moon taking the different shapes, 
it is all about you seeing both night and day part of the moon if i see only the night part of the moon i call them as what new moon day or what do you call them as what amavasa right if i just see the complete day part of the moon i call them as what full moon day right we'll be talking about it okay don't worry about it right sir why do you say the nearest star earlier what is the question why we say nearest star earlier uh, shankar suraj shankar i'm not getting the question right yeah again sir why we say nearest star earlier in the diagram mm. which diagram sir okay pravin has asked this question i was studying sixth geography ncrt i find some interesting point shall i note down those points obviously yes right of course geography is interesting my friend good good pravin to hear this word interesting from your word okay right okay uh, from the side real day diagram yeah i'll just come to this diagram uh still i am not getting your question my friend side real day diagram see uh, what is your question why we say nearest star earlier in the diagram side real day diagram distant star sorry okay okay distant star nothing see there is one point x right this point x completing one complete rotation with respect to a distant star you call them as what side real day right one complete rotation with respect to sun you call them as what solar day only two sides we are showing it that's it one side i am showing you the side real day one side i am just showing you the solar day that's it can you explain the full moon day once again definitely i will be explaining it right at the later stages we'll be explaining it because that itself is a concept okay sir you said if earth has only rotation then there will be no difference then what about the seasons if revolution is not there certainly speaking we will not have any season that is hypothetical question what i have raised but good since you have asked it if revolution is not there right seasons will not be there and my dear friends uh, some of the questions in between i have missed it uh, if you feel that i have not answered your question kindly repost it my friend. okay kannada medium students how to prepare for upsc exam see kannada medium students uh, there is one book uh, right called as bhugola shastra right bhugola shastra author i'll confirm it uh, shortly author of this book this bhugola shastra book is very good for upsc preparation right both for kpsc and upsc both it is good okay right abhishek dr rajkumar academy books are enough in exam point of view or we should study extra for book to no a prachkumar academy book is more than enough for your examination preparation old or new ncrt you can go with the new ncrt my friend sir is ncrt is enough for geography shall we need any value addition from further note c choice is yours either you go for ncrt plus class notes or dr rajkumar academy books along with class notes either of it should be sufficient ncrt and drax material along with class notes will be too much only one book for your reference along with class notes okay so why is that synodic day is considered and why not sidereal day see because 
whenever i talk about day see what is time time itself is a relative position of sun in the sky so our time comes with the sun not with the star right that's the reason we are just going for synodic day not for sidereal day okay sir so what to study in gc leon uh, is reading full book necessary not needed i will tell you what are the topics to be concentrated in gc leon what are the page numbers that has to be concentrated in gc leon i'll tell you entire book is not needed what will be the weightage of questions in preliminary examination with respect to geography see geography related questions and others if you take it there will be somewhere around 10 to 12 questions my friend right 10 to 12 questions or 20 10 to 13 questions but when it comes to mains examination right uh, this uh, marks will be somewhere around 60 to 110 marks right marks will be right marks will be asked in mains examination and talk about prelims somewhere it can be 10 to 13 my friend 10 to 13 okay how about gc leon book yes i have answered explain the noon to noon concept once again sir yeah i'll just come to it later boss get right? noon to noon concept sir should we buy both old and new ncrt no sir it becomes see you have to keep your study material as simple as possible do not go for too many material too many cook will spoil the soup right okay why don't we feel rotation and revolution once you go out of the earth once you go to the moon right once you travel to the moon you will feel rotation and revolution am i right because you are also revolving and rotating along with the earth you will not move means you will not feel my friend once you go to the moon you will start feeling the rotation once you go out of the say for example right some other planet if you go to the mars right you will find that earth is revolving okay 10 to 13 question in prelims on what basis they be asked sir basis means right okay. yes relative motion perfect it's a relative motion okay okay and somebody was asking about noon to noon as a concept my friend what is noon to noon as a concept today noon means what today sun above my head tomorrow sun above my head that is what i call them as what noon of today to noon of tomorrow that's what i call them as what noon to noon right i'll show you this uh, picture right here you can find right this is noon of today this is noon of tomorrow okay so noon of today to noon of tomorrow that is 24 hours that is sun above my head today to sun above my head tomorrow my friend okay and one more question somebody was asking yeah what is the other question you asked a brief about rotation see what is rotation spin of earth assume that this is earth my friend am i right this earth is spinning one complete spin you call them as what one day right this is a continuous moment you take a ball my friend spin it rotation as simple as this okay a minimum distance i need to travel to experience rotation go beyond right or i'm sorry escape from this earth right travel at the rate of escape velocity when you will start feeling the rotation what holds the sun in place it's a relative gravity my friend it's a relative gravity see in space always the smaller objects will be revolving around the larger object the larger object will further be revolving around right another larger object right that's how this gravity right holds place how exactly satellite is holded am i right you have satellites right artificial satellites right how the satellite see satellites normally they don't use fuels only launching it needs fuel am i right beyond its launching see if at all if it is having a special function it needs power otherwise it keeps 
right, rotating, revolving to be very precise around the earth. Why? Gravity of the earth is making it to sustain it. Okay. Right. Sir, if the distant star is not affecting the earth, why do we need sidereal day? Sidereal day is normally needed to study the celestial calculations. All right. Right. Say, for example, when I talk about the star rise, say, for example, you have the star rise, right? Every day the stars will come, say, for example, I would say, right, four minutes earlier they come, my friend. All right. Every day. Star rise will be four minutes earlier. Right. Why? Because that is with respect to side real day. So tell me about the zero shadow hours. I'll be telling you while uh, I'll be talking about the season cycles. Tomorrow's class, I'll be talking about this zero shadow as a concept. What is this zero shadow? Say, for example, sun will be there in the sky, but you will not experience shadow. Means what? Shadow will be falling within the object itself. That's the reason you call them as what? Zero shadow. Okay. So sun is revolving around which star? Right? Sun is revolving, but it is not revolving around a star. Sun is having its own pivotal. Entire solar system put together, it is revolving around another pivotal. Sir, can you please explain the leap year concept? Uh, I'll tell you. Tomorrow we'll be explaining this leap year concept once again. At what speed Earth is revolving around the sun, sir? I'm not very pretty sure about it, but somewhere I believe it is somewhere around 30 kilometers per second. Am I right? 30 kilometers per second. Right. That's what I believe, roughly. Uh, right. right. What you're saying is revolutionary velocity. Okay, we'll just check it. My mind says what I believe it is somewhere around. The velocity of revolution. Yes. Velocity of revolution, if you can see, it is 30 kilometers per second, my friend. Somewhere you can see, right? Speed of revolution, it is 30 kilometers per second. Right. Uh, okay. Sir, what about El Nino and La Nina? Geography takes somewhere around 70 hours for completing, my friend. Okay. One and a half hours, we cannot complete the geography. Okay. El Nino and La Nina are the phenomena which happens in Pacific Ocean, South Pacific Ocean. Normal condition, you call them as La Nina. Reversed condition, you call them as what? El Nino. So, this El Nino and La Nina has the direct impact in affecting this Indian monsoon. So we'll be studying at the later stage. Okay. Right. So some technical issue here uh, made you host. You can end any time you wish, Dr. Sudhakar. Thank you, Dr. Right. So I would wish to end now itself. Okay. Right. Uh, regular classes means offline classes, sir. Uh, see, this is uh, even I do not know. Offline, I would mean we'd like to be in offline classes. Okay. Uh, sir, how long is one year exactly then? As I said, you right, 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, and 46 seconds, my friend. I think I have just given you that value. Yep. Okay. Right, my friends, there ends the discussion today. So tomorrow we'll catch you up, right? And some of the topics I'll be discussing tomorrow, I'll tell you. If possible, you read it, just Google, just search it in Google and come. Rest of the revolution I'll be covering. I'll be covering the topic called the season cycle. What is season? Why do we have season? Right. Then four important days of a season will be covering it. What are they? Right. The June 21st. Am I right? June 21st. Right. Summer solstice, winter solstice, equinox position will be discussing it. Okay. So kindly prepare. Right for those topic and come to class. If at all, if you're uh, coming prepared to the class, right, what happens generally, your 
receptive skills will be high. Okay, right. Season aside, this is what we are going to discuss tomorrow. Right, my dear friends. So somewhere I'll just stop the discussion here today. Right. It's really great uh, interacting with you. Right. Happy to see you. Right. I'm wishing you all the best for your career and civil service preparation. Thank you and God bless.